The Challenge of the Yukon. Wonder Dog King, swiftest and strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazes a trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the challenge of the Yukon. Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserved law and order in the new Northwest country, where the greed for wealth and power led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, Sergeant Preston and his Wonder Dog King met that challenge, and justice ruled triumphant. Sergeant Preston stood in the bank in Seahart, talking to a young clerk. And you say, Dave, that he was about 6'1", dark hair and eyes, heavy set. Sergeant Preston, I'm not likely to forget that man of the day I die. I never before had anyone point a gun at me and order me to turn the combination of a safe. Had you seen him at any time before the robbery? Never laid eyes on him until then. Well, Sergeant Preston, I didn't know you were here. Oh, hello there, Mr. Everett. The sergeant was just asking me about our bank robbery, sir. Oh, about the robbery. Well, in that case, Sergeant, you'd better come into my office where I can tell you the facts about it. Certainly. Dave tells me that you two were the only ones in the bank when the thief entered it. That's right. Uh, you go on with your work, will you, Dave? Yes, sir. Uh, right this way, Sergeant. Sit down, won't you, Sergeant? Thank you. Now, if you'll just tell me what happened. Of course. It was after closing time. I... Good night, Dave. Good night, Mr. Everett. Get back in there, Mr. What? Look here, we're closed for the day. If you want to come in in right, the morning... Get back in there. You over there, keep your hands in sight. Yeah. This is an outrage. You can't get away with walking in here, carrying a gun. Shut up. Forcing it. You go back to the safe and start turning the combination. Very well. Mr. Everett, I... I'd better do as he says, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> and it's being smart about it. I start to work on that combination. Come on, hurry it up. There. Good. Now, kid, you will put the cash in there. Put it in the sack. Yeah. Quit fumbling. Yes, sir. Here, Dave. Isn't there something we can do, Mr. Ever? Not unless you're willing to take a chance on being shot. He means business. Come on, hurry up and get the last of it in there. All right. Every bit of cash in the safe is in that sack. Good. The first man that tries to follow me gets his head blown off, you understand? That was the way it happened, Sergeant. I see. From the description Dave gave me, I think the thief is the man I've been after for quite some time. Mm, who's that? A man named Joe Farrell. He's wanted for a number of robberies. Farrell? Yes. In Melville, a man died as a result of a shooting scrape with him, so murder's been added to his record. Farrell. Joe Farrell. That name's familiar somehow. I can't seem to place it. Why, I... Joe, Sergeant, I remember now. Why, of course. Several years ago, that man bought a strip of land from the bank. I didn't recognize him the other night. He's changed. He bought land in Seahorse? No, it was about six miles north of town. Paid cash for it. Mm. There was a well-built cabin on the property, as I remember it. He didn't dicker about the price at all. You handled the transaction. Yes, that's why I remember it now. Sergeant, maybe he's using that place as a hideout. It's off the main trail. I'll look at that place. You can't miss it. If you go out to Edgewater Creek and turn right off the main trail, it's the first cabin you'll come to. Well, thanks very much for your help, Mr. Evans. Well, not at all, sir. I'll be glad to do anything I can. Good luck. A short time later, King and Sergeant Preston were on the trail, heading toward the cabin Clinton Everett had mentioned. The Mountie and his dog covered ground rapidly. That must be the place ahead of us, King. No smoke coming from the chimney, but these tracks look fresh. <laughs> now, let's see, boy. Anybody in here? Hmm, <laughs> that fire's been killed within the last hour. Embers are still warm. What is it, fella, huh? All right, buddy, you're covered. Eh? I'm 
I'm up there in the loft. Your door can't reach me. So that's it, eh? <laughs> I can put daylight through you if I have to. But I got other plans. I have to get on that table before I decide to shoot. There. Got a revolver all you can? Yes. Now walk to the middle of the room. Keep your hands up. I'm coming down. And just so you don't get any ideas, Marty. The excitement will be on you every minute. All right, you're calling the cards now, but there's one thing you forgot. King, the window boy, run for it. That window. They were too late. He's gone. Yeah, I should have dropped that dog when he walked in here with you. But he ain't going to do you any good, Francis. Not for your going. No. No. <laughs> you just walked into a trap, Molly. And with your eyes wide open. If it was up to me, I'd shoot you where you're standing. There's nothing to stop you. You're holding the gun. Oh, no? <laughs> the boss and me got something else figured out for you, Preston. As soon as he gets here, we'll get started on it. Then you're expecting someone else, I take it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a little surprise for you, Mouty. You can start counting the minutes. But believe me, you ain't got many of them left. A short time later, the door of the cabin where Sergeant Preston was being held prisoner opened. The banker himself, Clinton Everett, walked in. Well, I see you got it. Good work, Joe. He walked right in, just like you said he would, Mr. Evans. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll need some light in here. Well, Sergeant, are you surprised? Not at all. When I realized this was a trap, it wasn't difficult to connect you with it. And maybe you can guess what's in store for you. I know that neither one of you can afford to let me live. Yeah, that's too bad. But I'll get the rope, Joe. There's one thing you overlooked. What? That window. It was broken when my dog jumped through it. Jumped through it? Joe, did you let that dog get away? I, I couldn't stop him, boss. He was out of here before I, I could I warned even... you about that dog. King went for help, Everett, and he'll be back here with it very soon. You bungling idiot, I told you. I told you that dog was poisoned to drop him before he could start any trouble. I couldn't do it until Preston was disarmed. He'd have got me while I got the dog. Uh, well, never mind. Well, we've got to work fast. I'll hit him over the head. You tie his hands and feet. Preston, we're going to set fire to this cabin... And leave you in it. You'll never get away with it, Everett. You won't be here to know whether we do or not. When the great dog king arrived in Seahorse, he went directly to the office of the town constable. <laughs> Sergeant will be around directly. You two are never very far apart. Come on, Sandra, what's wrong with you, fella? Hmm? I just let you in from the outside. Now you're scratching the doors if you want to get right back out again. Hey, now, now, cut it out. Let my leg alone. What's the idea, huh? I thought the sergeant taught you better manners, fella. Trying to sink your teeth into me like I was a hugger. Hey, wait a minute. Something funny about this. Preston was coming. He'd have been here by now. Hey, you want me to go with you, King? Well, I should have known something was wrong. Wait till I get my back and all on, boy. All right, King. You lead the way and I'll be right with you. Breaking the trail for Constable Hammond's dog... King was returning to the cabin where his master was held prisoner. The Malamute tilted his sensitive nose in the air. <laughs> Mingled with the sharp, clear sense of the wilderness was the anchored, pungent odor of smoke. Instinctively, King knew it was the cabin burning, a cabin he'd left a short time ago. The dog set an even faster pace for himself. His one thought was a terrible fear of his master's safety. He must reach him immediately. King never hesitated. The door to the cabin was closed, and already flames were edging it, leaping hungrily with every second. But the window. The Malamute jumped through the window, the same window through which he'd escaped. The smoke was suffocating. Momentarily, the dog's eyes blurred. 
And in the fury of the fire, he stopped, trying to locate his master. Hey! Oh, hey! Hey, old boy. <coughs> the ropes. The ropes, fellow, you'll have to cut them on your teeth. That's it. That's it, boy. A little more and I'll be able to... There, my hands are free. Now the ropes are on my feet, fella. <coughs> Good work, fella. Now I can... There. Come on, boy. You'll have to leave me the door. This will cost... <coughs> I'm all right, Constable. Thanks to King. When the dog came in alone, I knew that there was something wrong. What happened? Clint Everett is working with Farrell, a bank robber I was trailing. I came out here and walked into a trap. They tied me up and set fire to the cabin. Oh, I the murdering skunks. They ought to hang for this. We're going to see that they're brought to jail for it. Send this up to a miner's jury. Get the dogs ready to travel, King. Jupin Jupiter! You didn't get out of that cabin a mite too soon, Sergeant. Look at that. The whole thing's caved in. And if it hadn't been for King, I'd have been... Come on, Constable. we got a trail to follow. Sure, All Sergeant. right, fella. On King! On your man! Meanwhile, a few miles north of the cabin, Clinton Everett and Joe Farrell sat by a campfire. Both men watched the glow of a burning cabin as it colored the dark northern sky. I still wish we was where we could watch that cabin burn to the ground. Listen, it's safer this way. As soon as the glow dies out of the sky, we'll know there's nothing left but him. <laughs> That's when we start back, huh? Yes. When we get back there, we'll start looking around. Just to make sure there's no sign of any rope in the ruins. <laughs> By now, there ain't nothing left of the rope or Preston either. Well, I'm not taking any chances. If another Monty were to browse to those ruins and find evidences of short pieces of rope, that'd blow the accident theory sky high. Ah, uh, there ain't another Monty in 300 miles of the place. You never know about mountains, my friend. Hey, it's like somebody mushing along the trail. I... Why, they, they must have just come past the cabin. If any questions are asked, we just noticed that glow in the sky and we're about to start over. So... Sure, boy. They... Hey, you see that lead dog coming? A free lead. I thought there was only one of those in the Yukon. Oh, I guess we're just jittery. For a minute, I thought it might have oh, been that. Get out! Oh, oh, it, it can't be! Oh, oh, oh. Get away from me! Get my gun out! You're doing boy. nothing, Farrell. Both your hands. Both of you. The call is dark off! Long thing. Good work, fella. Oh, oh. Well, Everett, I imagine you hardly expected to see me again. Hey, are that the Aziz, the two skunks were after, Sergeant? That's right. Put the handcuffs on him, Constable. Yeah, hey, you bet your life I will. Well, I guess you win, Preston. I never expected to see you again. The loot's on the sled, Constable. We'll start back to town immediately. Sure, Sergeant. Both of you are under arrest. <laughs> yes, fella. Thanks to you, the case is closed. <laughs> These copyrighted dramas originate in the studios of WXYZ Detroit. And all characters, names, places, and incidents used are fictitious. They are sent to you each week at the same time and reach you from our transcription studios.